United States inflation rate from 1990 to 2022. What do you notice? What do you notice? When you look at this, this red line right here, you see at the bottom is 0%, and this is the number of years, right? So in 1990, in 19, uh, 2021, 2022, and this is 2%, this is 4%, this is 6%, this is 8%. Mm -hmm. So as you see, uh, 1990, the inflation rate went from 1990, over 5%. Do you see that, everybody in the Zoom? You see what I'm talking about? Right here, 19, 1990, right? The inflation rate is over 5%, because right there, right here is 4%. Right here is 6%, and right here is over 5% for sure, 2021. And it, right now, 2022, look at the inflation rate. What is it right now? 8.2. 8.1. 8, over 8%, 8.6. 8, 8, it's 8.2 right now, percent. Okay, remember this? The Federal Reserve keep increasing the federal fund rates to control, to reduce the inflation rate. Right now, because of our inflation rate still 8.2%, what they're trying to do, they try to increase the, the federal rate. fund rates to lower the inflation, inflation rate, rate. And then, and you see, let's take a look at 20, 2018. Most of the inflation rate is, be, is below what? 2%. Below 3%, right? And look at 2019. What is the inflation rate? Below 2%. 2%, right? And how about 2020? 2%. Below 2%, but a lot of them below 1%. Okay? All right? All right. Okay, look. Now, 2021, what happened? What is the inflation rate cap there? Five percent. No. Seven. So, over 7% seven already. But I remember December of 2021, the interest rate, we locked for our clients still at 2.875% for 30 year fixed. And remember, the rate we locked for our client is not the federal fund rate. Remember right now, the federal fund rate is 3.2%, but the rate we locked for our client right now is seven. over 6%, almost seven, right? So they are very different. But December 2021, the rate we lock for our client is still under 3%. Look at the inflation going up starting June of 2021. And it go up higher and higher by the end of 2021. I just don't understand why the Federal, Federal Reserve didn't do anything back then. And they wait until, you know, they wait until when? They wait until March of 2022. They do the first hike. The first hike is a quarter. I don't know why they wait so long to increase the federal fund rates. I don't get it. Maybe they, they have their own reason. I just don't understand. But they kind of wait too long. Um, they wait until March 2022. 20, uh, they raised the federal fund rate from 0.25% to 0.5%. And then... The rate at that time, the, the inflation rate in March 2022 is what? 8.542%. Do you see that? The inflation rate in March is over 8%. And then after they raise it by a quarter, inflation rate go down a little bit. But then in May, it go <laughs> up again. So in May, they raised... In, the federal fund rates one more time. This time they raised 0.5%. So the federal fund rate become 1% in May. Okay? And look at the, the inflation rate up there. In June, after they increased the, 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 inf uh, the, fund the rate. inflation rate, the federal fund rate to 1%, in June of 2022, the inflation rate still going up over 9%. When the inflation rate keep going up, you know what happened? People keep buying. People keep spending. Because people keep spending, the inflation rate keep going up because right now, we, we're just talking about rates. We're talking about rate, why? Because we see interest rate going up and going down because of inflation and deflation. We talk about um, Federal, federal fund rates are going up, they're going down, right? Home price, 
Does home price go down? No. It go down in a short term, but then look at the long term. What happened to home price? It's only going up. But look, look, you look at the, uh, you look at this one. It's going up and down, right? It's going up and down. Look at this one. Federal fund rate going up and down like crazy. Remember this table. So today we talk about this so that you understand the nature of the economy of U.S. So you can talk to your client who's scared, who's confused, don't know what to do. Here's what you do. Show them this is the federal fund rate. It goes up and down. This is the inflation rate. It goes up and down. But look at the house price. It's only go up. I'll show you something. Yeah, so, yes. Rent. It, does it go down? Go up. It's only go up too. So somebody who invests in home, are they, should they be worried? No. Should they be worried if they say, I have so much money now, I want to buy. I, I see a very awesome property over there. I want to buy it. Should I buy? Look at this. Yes, you should. Right now, by the way, the rent is so high. It's time to make so much money. Since the rent, since 1940, look at it. Since 1940 to 2020, when it was only $27 for one bedroom apartment, now it's $1,104. This is the average rent of the whole US, not in Bay Area. Bay Area is more expensive, right? So this is rent, rents go up. You see that? But by the way, this information, I, I Google it up. I don't make up this number. This is the history. This is the real facts. This is real data, okay? Okay, rent, okay, let's talk about rent and income. Okay, I don't want to read the whole thing, you can read it later, but look at the last one, read it for me, Jose. Rent prices increased 12.5% faster than wages. Explain it to me. Um, the, <laughs> <laughs> the rent prices uh, keep going up while your wages stay about the same. But it, how much more? 12.5% faster. What do you think about this statement? Rent prices increased 12.5% faster than wages. When you rent, I did some calculation. If you if you are you have a family and you need a three bedroom, two bathroom, make it very easy number. It's very cheap, three thousand five hundred for a month. After ten years, you spend more than four hundred thousand for rent. Okay, and you don't claim any tax for that. You 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 lose for more than four hundred thousand after ten years. But if you rent, but the rent three thousand five hundred doesn't stay the same number for ten years or thirty years. If somebody rent 30 years, get what happened? Oh my God, 30 years later, the rent of 3,500 maybe. So they lose money, all the money they rent, they lose it. Their income cannot keep up, uh, catch up with their rental, uh, monthly rental that they have to pay. Not only that, when they rent, they don't file any tax. They cannot claim tax from their income, they lose. But when they buy a house, get what happened? They lock in a 30-year fixed rate. If they pay 4,000 a month, they pay 4,000 a month for the rest of 30 years, period. It doesn't go up. The rents go up every year, but the mortgage payments stay fixed 30 years. So when you talk to your client, say, you buying home to live in, right? The only thing you need right now is your down payment, right? and your monthly payment will be staying fixed for 30 years, meaning you lock in the power of your money. That's it, you only need that much money every month. 30 years later, the payment's still the same. And after 30 years, you pay off your mortgage, you have a free home, right? What are you waiting for? Because when they say, I'm waiting for, you have to say, okay, you're waiting for what? Waiting for the price or the interest rate? Actually, I think you wanna wait for the number that it makes sense to you for your monthly payment. And in order to find out what it is, come to my office, we work on it to find out what is the number that makes you happy, that you wanna move on. So, look into the rent. Rent in California every 10 years. I don't have rent in other states, but you can look it up. But this is from California every 10 years. Look, you look at, uh, I'm looking at the last four, from 1980 to 1990, the rent go from $283 to $620. So it more than double, okay? It more than double. 
And then from, 20, from 2000 to 2020, uh, the rent go from $747 to $1,614. FMR means fair market rent. Nothing to worry about. Because I remember I bought my first home, 30-year uh, fixed loan, 7% uh, interest rate. And by that time, we was just married, right? We didn't have the down payment. We only have 10% down payment. So the first loan is 7% rate for 30-year fixed. The second loan, we paid 9% for a HELOC line. Uh, we were so happy we did it. Okay? We're so happy. When was that? It was 2000. Okay. We bought a home, uh, our first home in 2000. It's December of 2000. Okay. 20, 22 years ago. Yeah. We sold it in 2005. We make uh, 300,000. We moved to another house. Uh, we bought it uh, 1.3 million. The next, the second home we live in. And we keep it we bought it in 2000, end of 2005, we bought the house, the new house for 1.3 million. We kept that house until, we, we sold it recently, 2021. So that means from 2006 to, 2000, to 2021, there was a crisis, right? 20, uh, 2008, the crisis, 2008, 10, 11, 12, our house value go down to 900. Thousand, but so what? We sold it in 2021 at 2.55. So we bought it 1.3. We sell it at 2.55, and we went through the crisis, but we're still making so much money. So 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 to keep this in mind, buying home is a long-term investment. So it doesn't matter. The home price gonna go up and down at some point, but if we keep it long enough. We double it. An agent is, is it demands a lot of energy from you, you know. Being a good agent, you have to not just learn about your technical stuff, but you have to learn about the environment where you work, you know, so you can provide the best, the best information and service that you can you can help them make decisions. We don't make decisions for them. They make their own decision. But the best you can do to provide them with all the information, and then they have to make decision. That's a key. And to do that, you have to learn a lot, and you have to be willing to learn. You cannot just sit there and, and expect people to come to you. You have to go out there and find information. And you know, you have to accumulate that information and share it to your clients, and that's how they appreciate your service. Awesome. Otherwise, no, no, you don't expect to sit there, you know. That's why I think being a good agent, it takes a lot of work. A lot of work, it's just simple, you know, just get the license and hang, uh, hang the license with the plastic wipe and expect people to come to you. No, it doesn't work that way. Okay. I used to have that card my, myself, but it, it didn't work for a while. And then I realized, oh, I have to provide something valuable to my clients. Exactly. To my prospect before they can become my clients. Thank you, and you. So what you're saying is your client is the one who decides. That's important. So how do you... Help your client to make a decision, the right decision. That's important. You have to be able to, to show them all the possibility, all the benefits that change their life. So when they decide, they look at what you show them. Oh my God, all this possibility, all this profits for me, for me, for me. And how do you do that? You have to have all the information. You have all your experience. You have to spend time sharing so that they see all the things you say is their benefit and they're gonna decide they're gonna decide by themselves to do it not you forcing them when you force somebody to do something that means you manipulate them mm -hmm. and that kind of sale doesn't work right that's why a lot of people when they heard about sales people they're afraid they don't want to be close to that person because they think about sales mean manipulation right but we don't do that here we give people what they need to know what benefit the most and they decide what benefit the most and they decide to do it for themselves not for us okay so that, that's it for today i think uh we share enough thank you so much we go over the time all the time thank you so much for thank people you. all the time on the line thank you and you thank you thank you
name is Helen and I'm working as a realtor as well as a mortgage processor. When I just started my career in real estate, um, I took MC's mortgage training and I found that they were very informative. The fundamentals that she shared during the training was um, really clear and easy to apply. So I really appreciate that I got a chance to participate in her training. MC was very knowledgeable and energetic. The way she conducted the training was very easy to follow, um, so I really like her training. I strongly recommend home buyers to take MC's training about mortgage um, because home buying is a very complicated process and our mortgage is one of the most complicated ones. Um, so if you know about mortgage, it is easier for you to make planning as well as it will help you to avoid the surprises that trust me you will never want to go through them.